Most people spend months or even years trying to master data structures and algorithms by reading textbooks, watching endless tutorials, memorizing algorithms, but still struggle to solve leak code problems consistently. I was one of them. It took me almost a year of trial and error to figure out the right path. But once I did, I realized you could actually ace DSA interviews in just 10 weeks. In this video, I'll reveal the exact strategy that took me from failing leak code easy problems to cracking interviews at Google and Amazon, and I'll share a step-by-step -step roadmap that you can start using today, as well as the resources that actually matter, the problem sets to focus on, and the accountability system that makes all the difference. By the end, you'll know exactly how to build the skills and confidence to ace your next interview. Hi friends, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer who's worked at Google and internet Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. I've been on both sides of the interview table. I've solved hundreds of leak code problems to land my roles, and I've interviewed dozens of candidates at Google. Let me start with a story that might sound familiar. You decide that you want to learn how to drive. So you spend months studying the driver's manual, watching YouTube videos about how the car works, and memorizing traffic laws. Then, when you finally get behind the wheel for the first time, you realize that you actually have no idea how to really drive. This is exactly what most people do with data structures and algorithms. They think the path is to learn theory first, understand every perfectly and then apply it. But this is backward. I call this the tutorial trap. You're consuming so much information that you fool yourself into thinking you understand, but you've never actually practiced the fundamental skill. When I was struggling, I had watched more than 50 hours of algorithm tutorials and read cracking the coding interview cover to cover. But put me in front of an actual coding problem? I was completely lost. The reality is that your brain only learns through challenge and struggle. Yes, you need to know the basic theory still, but watching someone else solve problems doesn't teach you to solve problems any more than watching someone else play basketball teaches you to shoot free throws. So this brings me to the fundamental shift you need to make. Stop trying to learn all of the data structures and algorithms theory before you start solving problems. Think about learning guitar. You wouldn't start by memorizing music theory for months. You'd pick up the instrument, try to play simple songs, simple chords, and gradually more and more complex things. Great musicians didn't get there by studying theory books. They got there by playing thousands of hours and developing an ear for what sounds good. DSA is all about recognizing patterns and having practice enough so that you develop a good intuition and can apply the right approach quickly. So here's what you should do. Pick a problem, try to solve it for 30 minutes max, and if you get stuck, look up the solution, type it out yourself, and understand why it works. Then move on to the next problem. You're building your pattern recognition muscle, not memorizing every possible algorithm. Now let me give you the actual roadmap broken down week by week. This 10-week plan will take you from beginner to interview ready. Weeks 1 to 2, foundation building. Start with the basics. If you've never taken a formal DSA course, that's totally fine. Spend these two weeks cramming intro to algorithms the CLRS textbook. Focus on understanding things like big O notation, basic data structures like arrays and linked lists, and simple algorithms. Don't worry about any implementation yet, just understand the concepts and the basic syntax. Weeks three to four, core data structures. Now dive into the essential data structures, for example, stacks, queues, hash maps, and binary trees. Learn how they work internally and their time complexities. Start with leak code easy problems that manipulate these data structures. This hands-on practice is critical. Weeks five to six, algorithms patterns. Focus on the most important algorithms patterns. For example, two-pointer, sliding window, binary search, and basic recursion. These patterns will show up everywhere in interviews. Continue doing leak code easy problems in parallel and start going through the leak code 75 which is a problem list designed to cover the most important data structures and algorithms you'll need for coding interviews. Weeks 7 through 8, advanced topics. Tackle graphs, trees, and dynamic programming. Be sure to master breadth-first search and depth-first search. If you're consistently solving leak code mediums, consider getting leak code premium for company-specific practice. And finally, weeks 9 through 10, interview simulation. This is crunch time. Work through cracking the coding interview practice problems and do mock interviews three to four times per week and practice writing code on whiteboard or in simple text editors. This is because some companies like Meta give you just a notepad instead of an actual IDE, so get comfortable tracing through your code by hand. Throughout all these 10 weeks, remember the 30-minute rule for mediums and 45-minute rule for hards. If you're stuck, look up the solution after those time limits. Remember that you're building pattern recognition, not reinventing and implementing algorithms from scratch. Also be sure to block out specific times in your calendar for each week's focus. Treat this like any other important commitment because it is. And let me be specific about what core data structures and algorithms you actually need to master. For data structures, focus on these core ones first. Arrays, linked lists, stacks, queues, hash tables, and binary trees. These are your foundation. For arrays, master techniques like two-pointer and sliding window. For example, two-pointer is perfect for problems like finding pairs that sum to a target or removing duplicates from sorted arrays. Sliding window helps with substring problems or finding maximum sums in subarrays. For trees, you need to be comfortable with all three traversals 
in order, pre-order, and post-order. Know when to use each one. In order gives you sorted order BST, pre-order is great for copying trees, and post-order works well for bottom-up calculations. For graphs, master both BFS and DFS. BFS is perfect for shortest path problems and unweighted graphs, while DFS works well for detecting cycles or exploring all possible paths. Don't worry about advanced structures like trees or segment trees until you've nailed these basics. To be honest, most interview problems can be solved with these fundamental building blocks. And even with the right approach and problems, most people still fail. Why? Because they try to do it alone. Learning DSA is like going to the gym. You can have the perfect workout plan, but if you're doing it alone without workout buddies, you more likely than not might quit when it gets hard and there's no one else to shame you if you stop going. What finally worked for me was creating external accountability through a study group. Find two to four other people who are serious about getting good at these algorithms. Bonus points if you want to apply to similar companies. Meet several times a week for two to three hours each session and come prepare with three to five problems to work through together. The key is that you're competing with each other in a friendly way. I can't overstate how much this changes the game. When my friend would solve a medium problem before me, I'd go home and study extra hard just so I could come back and show what I learned and not feel like I was falling behind. That healthy competition was the missing piece for me. And if you can't find people IRL to do this with, that's totally fine. Consider tracking your progress publicly. For example, you could start a blog, tell your non-technical friends your goals, and make it embarrassing for yourself to quit. As you're practicing problems, keep in mind there's a critical difference between memorizing solutions and actually understand them. A lot of people get trapped in solution collection. For example, they see a problem, look up the answer, think, oh, that makes sense, and then move on. But when they see a similar problem later, they're stuck again. Here's how to avoid this. When you look up a solution, don't just understand the step-by-step -step process, actually understand why it works. Ask yourself, why did they choose this data structure? What makes this approach efficient? How would I modify this if the problem changed? For example, with binary search, don't just memorize a template. Understand why we can eliminate half the search space each time. Understand what conditions must be true for binary search to work. That way, when you see a problem that's not obviously binary search, you might be able to still recognize the pattern. I use the teaching test. After solving a problem, can you explain the solution to someone else without looking at your notes? If not, then you don't really understand it yet. Here are some more practical tips. First, a quick note on language choice. I recommend Python for coding interviews unless you have a strong reason for not using it. It is minimum boilerplate, reads almost like English, and lets you implement solutions quickly. Don't get hung up on whether interviewers will judge you for not using more difficult language like C++. You want to spend your mental energy on problem solving, not syntax. Secondly, consistency beats perfection every single time. It's better to spend 30 minutes every day practicing than eight hours once a week. Your brain really needs time to process and make connections. Set a realistic goal and pick something you can actually stick to. And finally, don't beat yourself up when you can't solve a problem. I still remember not being able to solve two sum when I started, literally one of the easiest problems on LeetCode. We all have to start somewhere. And finally, I know I've been telling you to avoid setting theory up front, but that doesn't mean theory isn't important. Once you've struggled with problems and started recognizing patterns, that's when you should dive deeper into things like time complexity and master's theorem, space complexity, and theoretical foundations. The theory will stick much better because you now have practical context. And look, I'm not going to lie, learning DSA is hard and frustrating. There will be days where you feel like you're not making progress or you're actually going backward. But here's what I want you to remember. Every single engineer at those tech companies like Google, Amazon, and Meta has been exactly where you are right now. The the difference between people who make it and the people who don't isn't natural talent, it's persistence and using an approach that actually works. And that's all I have for you in this video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want more content on software engineering careers, interview prep, and breaking into tech, make sure to subscribe. I've got more videos planned on system design, behavioral interviews, and navigating your first sweet job. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.